Okay, so we're talking about volume. Volume, you'll remember this from previous years that you've done it. Um, so the volume is, you think about a three-dimensional object and the amount of space it takes up. Okay, so the amount of space inside it. And this is when we have our units in this cube. So cube meters, cube centimeters, cube millimeters. Volume of a prism. Now remember prism from we were talking about the other day um, where we have an air an area that is then consistent throughout an entire shape. So here with a cylinder we've got the area it is a circle and is consistent throughout that entire three-dimensional shape. I like to think of it almost like um, you know we've got the area of a circle which is two-dimensional shape and then we've got height of those areas stacked on top of each other. That's how we can think about it. Now also all of these formulas are already on our measurement basics sheet that I gave out on the start of the year well not the start of the year but you know start of the topic and uh, so everything is there as well so you should have that glued into your bound reference and it is also um, here in your in your references, in your resources. Anyway, let's get back to the main event. So volume. So with prisms, we're talking about volume equals area times H. So we find the area and times it by the height of that solid. Okay. So our first one that we're looking at is a rectangular prism. So 12 by 15 by 20. So volume equals area times by H, the height. So volume equals, uh, so down the bottom, that bottom, that rectangle is 20 by 12 and the height is 15. So volume, get my calculator out, is 20 times 12 times 15, 3,600. So that's 3,600 cubic centimetres. Now this one is a prism. Why is it a prism? Well this shape up the top is consistent throughout the entire height of the prism. Okay and you get told here that the base is 25 square millimeters. That's the area of that base. So volume equals area times by H. So volume equals 25 times by 18. So that is 25 times by 18, 450 uh, square millimeters. Like so. Okay, so remember if something is a prism, that's where you have a cons an area that is consistent throughout. It doesn't change throughout that height of the prism. So with that, it is volume equals area times H. Now that's the same even with this, a cylinder. Here the area that is consistent is the circle. So my volume equals area times by H. So volume equals pi R squared times by H. 
So volume equals pi times by r squared. So r here is 12 and the height is 14. Now I'll show you my calculator when I do this. Obviously, if you've got your scientific one there, it'll look a bit different. So pi times by 12 squared times by 14 and as a decimal 6,333.45 and that's cubic centimetres. see right there. So when we're finding the volume of a sphere, so a sphere we know is based on a circle but that circle is not consistent throughout the three, throughout all of that shape is it? It's not one circle placed on top of another circle placed on top of another circle with that circle being all the same. The circle actually gets smaller and smaller and smaller doesn't it if you want to picture it okay it's circle here slightly circ smaller circle on top so we don't have a consistent shape that's why it's not a prism so it has its own special formula v equals 4 over 3 pi times r cubed okay so v equals Four on three pi r cubed. So volume equals four on three times by pi times by thirty cubed. Grab my calculator again. Now obviously if you're finding half a sphere you would then times your answer by a half. You're finding a quarter of a sphere, we times it by a quarter. So look at um, what you're trying to find. Don't need that. And control enter. Double check. Okay, so our volume is one one three zero nine seven point three four, and that's in cubic centimeters seven point three four cubic centimeters. Now the volume of a pyramid and of a cone uses the same you know, formula because neither of them are prisms are they? A cone is a circle but that circle is getting smaller and smaller and smaller till we get to that pointy end here. And this pyramid yeah, there's a rectangle down the bottom, but it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller until we get that to the pointy end. So that's why we've come up with that formula of the volume of the pyramid is one third of area times height, and cone again is one third of area times height. So let's do a couple of these. So we're finding the volume, so one third area times height, so volume equals one third pi times r squared times by height, so volume equals one third times by pi times by six squared times by ten. Now, the thing to note here, height must be at right angles to that base. Okay, height 
is at right angles to the base. It's not that length. That's the slant length. We use that when finding surface area. But height must be at right angles to that base. So again, I'll get my calculator. And that is one third times by pi times by six squared times by 10. Enter, oops, I'll fax it as an exact form, but I'll want the decimal. So control, enter approximately equal to so our volume is approximately 376.991. So if I was doing that to the nearest cubic centimeter, to the nearest whole number, that would be 377 cubic centimeters. So here, I have a pyramid, pyramid with a square base. So volume equals one third area times height. So volume equals one third times by 10 squared times by 12. So volume equals, I'll just use my scientific calculator for this, one third. And by the way, use the fraction, don't use an approximation, okay? Okay, so that's 400, so that's 400 cubic centimetres. So one thing that I um, haven't gone through there is capacity. Now capacity is how much liquid, how much liquid a, oops, a um, container can hold. And, and this is, really what you need to know here. And again, this is from your measurement basics um, handout, that one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. So one cubic centimeter is equal to one liter. So you can imagine, okay, that's 1000 cubic centimeters is a liter, yeah, your liter of milk. So one cubic meter is equal to 1000 liters. Okay, so keep that in mind when you have to do a conversion between capacity and volume or volume to capacity. So you work out the volume of a, of a shape, of a three dimensional shape, and then you can figure out the capacity, how much it can actually hold.